Okay, hi everyone. Today we're going to put together the Velman Mini Kit Flashing LED Sweethearts. It's a little late for Valentine's Day, but uh, we're going to go from beginning to end here. Uh, it's still in the package. We're going to unbox it. I'm set up with my soldering iron. It's already plugged in, ready to go. I've got a wet paper towel to clean the soldering iron. I've got a roll of solder. The kit's going to need a 9 volt battery, so I've got a 9 volt battery ready to go. And uh, let's just dive in. I have not put this kit together before. Let's see what we've got. Okay, we've got our battery holder for our 9 volt battery. We've got a little pack of resistors here. Looks like the kit is mainly made up of this uh, circuit board, so we're going to solder the components into the circuit board. You can see these little metal pads here. That's where we're going to attach the solder to get the, compo the components in. What else do we have? I'm going to make a little organized pile. <clears throat> We've got several uh, red, LED, uh, red LEDs, small ones. So I'm just going to separate those off into their own little pile. We also have several uh, capacitors. These little uh, can-shaped things are, are capacitors. Looks like we have two transistors. Transistors have three leads on them. You can tell these are the transistors. I don't know if you can see in the video there, but there are three leads on them. Two of those. According to the package, we've got 28 LEDs. I'm not going to waste your time counting the LEDs on the video, but hopefully there are in fact 28. If not, I'll rob one from another kit. And it looks like we also have two smaller resistors. And I... Uh, We'll, find, we'll figure out which or which when we get that far. It looks like we have three screws so you can attach it to a back board. It looks like it stands up on the, uh, the, the 9-volt LED holder. And inside the package, we've got instructions. <clears throat> because the components are, are labeled, we probably don't need to read these instructions too much. But so you can see in the video, there are instructions here. All right, let's dive in. First thing I want to do, I want to get my iron ready to go. So I'm going to tin my soldering iron. Those of you who are first learning how to solder, basically you're tinning the iron to get the oxidation off. You want a nice clean soldering iron tip so the solder flows nicely from the iron onto what you're, you're soldering. Just get a little solder on there, wipe it off onto your uh, moist paper towel. And we should be good to go. Let's see. Okay, start with number one. <clears throat> Looks like it wants us to solder the resistors first. So resistors one through seven <clears throat> looks like are Boy, it really is hard to read here. It says 1K2. What do we have here? Okay, those are these. The ones with the uh, brown, red, and red. Then we've got, yeah, okay, we've got seven of those, and we've got two of the other resistors. So on the board here, if you can see, the components are labeled uh, R1, R2, R3, and so on and so forth for resistors. <clears throat> so it looks like these are one through seven are these uh, 1K resistors. So um, basically, what you're going to do, you can see the, on the on each side of the circuit board, one side has these metal pads, the other side has the labels. You're going to take the the component and resistors. It doesn't matter which way they go. Some components are directional, like the uh, the LEDs. They actually matter which way they go. You can see one lead on the LED is longer than the others. But for the resistors, it doesn't matter. Whichever way you want to put it in is fine. And I'm just going to do them in order. So I'm going to find uh, I'm going to find R1, which is where's R2? Where's R1? There it is. If you can see on the video here, we've got R1. I'm going to take the, uh, the leads, put it through, make the component sort of flush onto the board. I'm going to spread the leads out just a little bit to make sure the component stays in place. <clears throat> now, resistors, you don't have to be too careful when you solder. They're not terribly heat sensitive, but some components like these transistors, you want to be careful how much heat you apply to the, uh, to the component. For really sensitive components like... Um, integrated circuits, you might need to use a heat sink to draw some of the heat away from the component. But for resistors, no big deal. Now the key to good soldering is you want to make sure you heat up the, the surface that you're soldering to enough so that the solder flows freely onto it. If you don't do that, you're going to get a cold solder joint and the component won't, won't stay put very, very long. So I'm just going to put the iron on there for a minute. 
let it heat up for a sec. You don't want to do it too long because you can actually separate the uh, the the pad, uh, uh, the soldering pad from the uh, circuit board itself. Let it heat up for a second, and hopefully after a second here, the solder should flow right onto the component. I haven't used this iron before. There we go. If you can see in the video, the solder is starting to flow. And if you kind of draw the uh, solder up the lead just a little bit, I got a little too much solder on there this time. It's been a little while since I've soldered. There we go. And it should look somewhat shiny when it's done. If it looks sort of dull and, and, uh, and opaque and flat, you probably have a cold solder joint, not a very good connection. In fact, I think I'm gonna heat that up just a little bit more. It looks like it didn't get a great connection there. Let's try that again. Get it nice and warm. Draw it up the lead a little bit. And there we go. Okay, now do the same thing on the other. You notice I keep wiping off my solder there and I wanna to try to keep the oxidation off. This, this iron hasn't been used in a little while and uh, it's got quite a bit of oxidation build up on it. Hopefully, uh, if you have a brand new iron, you might need to, uh, you might not need to, to worry about that quite so much. All right, so here we go. Get that nice and warm. The solder flow. And just draw it up the lead. And there we go. A little messy, probably a little too much solder. I think I'm gonna to switch to using some thinner solder here. Okay, so there's R1. Um, let's switch to R2. We've got seven of these to do. 